Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of African Betrayal of Negroes, Part 3. Important notice, it is never our intention to offend anyone with this video. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone. Remember, change is only a good thing if you change in a good way. Malcolm X It's better to walk alone than with a crowd going in the wrong direction. Diane Grant Remember, from the previous editions of this series, we entertained questions around why African races and tribes could not come together to end the slave trade and the unified position of Africans and non-Negroes against the Negroes, and how Africans and other non-Negroes like Barbers, Tuaregs, etc. take sides with the slave masters against the Negroes. Let us always remember that there is no way a people who enjoy human suffering, who enjoy human sorrow, who enjoy human pains, can unite with the victims of what they enjoy. It's impossible. So if you think about a so-called African unity, one way to look at it is the people that are being victimized are not the same as the oppressor. So because they are not the same, no matter what level you give it, no matter what name you give it, they would never come together. It's just like saying the slave and the master coming together to do what? It doesn't work. So that is what the African problem is. Remember we showed you a video of Thabo Mbeki, the former South African president who by definition is a Hottentot or a Kafa or a Zulu, whatever they are there, justifying the killings in Biafra and Ambazonia while defending colonial boundaries. That is exactly how it works. They normally side and take sides with the oppressor against the oppressed. But the unfortunate thing about the Africans is because the slave master understood them as a people with little brains to be used. This is documented, which we are going to show you. So let us move forward by referencing a book called History of Nigeria by A.C. Barnes, and it was published in 1929. And there we see the following. Lord Lugard, and there is no higher authority, says that from the point of view of the administrator, it is necessary to classify the people of tropical Africa into three groups according to their social organization, visibly the primitive tribes, the advanced communities, and the Europeanized Africans. Such a division connotes a more real and profound difference than that of racial affinities, for intermarriage and concubinage with alien captives and slaves have tended to obliterate tribal characteristics. The Fulani, especially in the upper classes, afford a typical example of the effect of constant concubinage with Negro slaves. They consider themselves a white people, and these, those of the pastoral Fulani who have kept their blood pure possess a light bronze complexion and other physical characteristics of the Hamitic races. But the town Fulani are as black as the pure Negro tribes and to the superficial observer differ from them but slightly in other respects. It will be convenient to consider first the advanced communities which are represented in Nigeria by the Yorubas and Beniz in the south and the Hausa, Fulani, Kanuri and Arab tribes in the north. So you have seen how they showed you subliminal here who the Negroes are. Notice that they are telling us that the only advanced communities in the south are the Beniz and Yorubas, and then the Hausa, the Fulani and Kanuri, and the Arab tribes in the north. So everyone in the south that they have discountenanced should tell you who the Negroes are. You won't understand this unless you have looked at both the history and the activities of both the Nigerian state and the AU and other African establishments you will see how they gang up clearly against the Negroes. So further down from the same page, reading from just above the highlighted portion, we see that of the origin of the Yorubas, 
there is no definite knowledge. Their myths give to life the honor of being the spot where God created man, both white and black, and there can be little doubt that Ife was the first settlement of the Yorubas in their present country. Ife remains to this day the spiritual headquarters of the race, and the sword of state has to be brought from Ife for the coronation of the Allah Finofoyo and some of the other Yoruba kings. There is the usual claim that the Yorubas came originally from Mecca, but to the African native, Mecca merely represents the East, and the tradition does not necessarily involve a suggestion that they sprang from the holy city of Islam. A further tradition that they came from Upper Egypt has better foundation. Certain carved stones found at Ife, the manner in which the dead are bound for burial, and the kind of cloth used for this purpose are supposed to indicate an Egyptian origin. Sultan Belo of Sokoto states in the work of which Captain Clapperton obtained an extract that the people of Yoruba, it is supposed, originated from the remnants of the children of Canaan who were of the tribe of Nimrod. The cause of their establishment in the West Africa was, as it is stated, in consequence of their being driven by Yoruba, son of Katan, out of Arabia to the western coast between Egypt and Abyssinia. So you see that they are not Negroes. And further down from the highlighted portion, you can pause the video and read the pages yourself. It tells us that whatever their origin, it is probable that the Yorubas were not originally of Negro blood, although in the centuries during which they have occupied their present territories, they have so intermarried with Negro slaves as to have lost their early characteristics. This is our interest here. So you can understand that they are not Negroes. So, but they may have Negro communities, they are small pockets of it. But the important thing is the bulk of them are not Negroes. This should explain to you why you notice that in Nigeria, the Yorubas do not talk about their other Yorubas outside Nigeria. But they always come to claim people like Ishekiri to be related to them when they are not. They are part of the conquest. So when you're looking at it, you think, oh no, they are being subjugated like you. No. But however, there are some Negro groups in Yoruba land that now speak Yorubas, which we are going to show you shortly. So from the same book, further down, we see where it tells us that when the Fulani became the rulers of Hausa land, they found already in existence a well-organized system of law and government, which they were intelligent enough to retain. And save for a change of rulers, the Hausa states were little affected by the jihad. There was no change in the form of taxation, which was based on the Quranic law and include zakat, regarded in theory as arms paid by the faithful and fixed in proportion relative to the nature and quantity of the property. When levied on crops, it is termed usher, and the Hausa name for the tax on livestock is Jangali. There was also a land tax known as Karaji in Hausa Kudinkasa and a capital tax Jizia, Hausa Gandu generally levied on conquered tribes. So our interest here is for you to see how the Fulani conquered the Hausas. Now remember that's the same thing they are bringing down south. They are European and Arab food soldiers. That's what they are doing. So there is no way you will expect that they can come together and unite with the people. They are not for development. They are just to help the Europeans and Arabs subjugate the Negroes. That's what they are doing. Now, unfortunately, the Negroid groups, according to the slave masters themselves, do not have enough mental capacity to understand what is good or bad for them. So they are easily used. And that is why they are able to use them anyway. So let's move forward. From the same book and reading from just above the highlighted portion, we see where it tells us that El Bekri, a Spanish Arab who wrote in 1067, note the date, 1067, 1067, refers to Kanem and says that it extended on the west as far as the river Niger, thus including the greater part of Hausaland, with the help of Tunis, the armies of Kanem appear to have subdued most of the Sahara by the end of the 12th century. 
and the Canem Embassy is recorded as having visited Tunis about the year 1237. Note the date 1237. The power and influence of the country seem to have rapidly increased during the next hundred years and before the 13th century had closed, the empire stretched from the Niger to the Nile and from Fezzan in the north to Adamawa in the south. Mohammedanism was introduced during the first great period of Kanem history. Towards the end of the 14th century, the collapse of the empire was threatened by the repeated attacks of the Bulala tribe and the king was compelled to vacate his capital in Kanem proper and retire into Bonu where a new capital was built. Our interest here is the dates. So you see how the conquest is being done when it started and how it's going on. So if you're thinking there is a time Africans will come together, it's a lie because they are all united against the Negro. The Negro is their common enemy. They were the same people that captured and sold the Negroes. So you understand what may be going on. So we challenge you to go and look for the materials referenced and study them. We want you to tell us where we, you think we got it wrong. The thing is, when you are looking at what is happening, even the mere fact that you notice that the BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera do not report the killings in the Middle Belt is enough to tell you. So, let us reference ethnology in two parts. One, fundamental ethnical problems and two, the primary ethnical groups by A. H. King, late vice president, Anthrop Institute correspondence member Italian and Washington Anthrop Societies, late professor of Hindustani University College, London, published 1896, and we see the following. And from the highlighted portion, we see Hausa, the chief nation between the Niger and Bono, Negroid. Speech shows hermetic influences. Then he goes further down to say Bolo, Yako, Tangala, Kali, Mishi, Doma, Benue, Bezin, Egara, Ibo, Iju, Okreka, that's a jo, Nempe, which is Nembe, Niger Delta, and Oyo River, Efik, Kwa, Andoni, from Boni to Rio del Rey, where Bantu domain begins on the west coast. Bogu, Gama, Mosai, Tombo, Gurung, whatever, within the Niger Bend, and then Kanuri, Bonu, Negroid. Speech shows Tibu influences. So you see how they know to a granular detail the different people. And you see further down, it says Maba, Bakit, Masalit, Kuranga, Kabaga, etc. Wade, mostly Negroid. So they know who is Negro and who is Negroid. They also know Negroid Bantus, which they place as the aborigines of the Cameroons and all that. So you understand what is going on. There is no way people that are happy to see you die to see you in sorrow to see your children killed can unite with you because that's what makes them happy you need to understand why the au cannot call the nigerian state to order but instead celebrating the president that is overseeing the mass mother in the middle belt so you understand what we're talking about we are not telling you to believe us we are not telling you to um give us clicks or thumbs up we want you to look for the books referenced and study them yourself you might be negroid but acting in ignorance you might be negro still acting in ignorance so the important thing is when you read and study the scriptures say my people perish for lack of knowledge it is that knowledge that we need you to have so that you understand the games being played so from the same book we see where it tells us that thus the gold and slave coasts are occupied by a considerable number of negro tribes speaking three or four marked dialects of a common stock language she ga eo and yoruba and also as shown by ellis presenting numerous points of resemblance in their physical characteristics social usages religion traditions and progressive grades of culture so you see what we're telling you remember when they are saying sudan here they are talking about negro land it is not the sudan you know today so when you're hearing south sudan and all those places they are different people what we are not sure very well now is what the boundaries of negro land was and guinea so those are things we challenge you to do conduct some basic research to find out too 
so if you go further down you see where it gave us other people like Wolof and all that those are not our interests but of interest there is where it says so with the fullers who can be followed by means of their language throughout all their wanderings from near the Atlantic seaboard right across the black zone to Darfur although no longer everywhere distinguishable by their physical features from the surrounding Negro populations hence in the subjoined tables of the Sudanese and Bantu people the groupings have necessarily to a large extent a linguistic base but the important thing is you see that the fullers are different from the negroes that is very key here but let us move forward so again we see where it says hottentot half castes known as gaska whatever borders scattered in small groups over the castan provinces of cape colony further north the galas somali and abyssinians of northeast africa are certainly a blend of the negro and hamite on the one hand and of the negro hamite and semite on the other most of the sudanese populations also mabas begami dasas kanuri hausas song race touch crawlers fullers that's the fulanese are not negroes but negroid mixtures of hamites and aborigines all along the borderlands between the barber and black domains some of these Notably, the houses are greatly superior in many respects to both of the primitive elements. Our interest is here that they are not Negroes. From a careful study of the West African Negroes, Senegal to Angona, J. Denica and L. Laloy conclude generally that they also are a mixture of at least three distinct elements. Our interest here is that you see that there are Semites, there are Babas, there are houses. There are Negroes, there are Negroids. So these different people are what you are expecting could ever come together, which is impossible. The slave master understands this. He knows this and he follows it very closely using those because they are weaker intellectually and mentally. You can imagine the level of brain that someone you will call give weapons of mass destruction to throw at his brothers and siblings and he does so and tell you he's protecting his territorial integrity you should know that those people are bereft of common sense ask yourself let's say something like the Ghanaian army the nigerian army the gabonese army and all those armies if they say they are protecting you or anybody or territorial integrity are they protecting between gabon and cameroon and nigeria or ghana so whose territory are they protecting and why so are they thinking that Ghana will one day wake up and say, oh, I want to take over Nigeria? Or Nigeria will wake up and say, I want to take over Ghana? Now, even if they did, you as an individual should remember that if they took you over, they will only be giving you what a state gives to its citizens. A state acts like a father. But in sub-Saharan Africa, the state doesn't act like a father because the state has an irresponsible authority on top of it. So that is why you see all the bloodshed and violence there and they can never come together. Remember, the people that are sitting on top there, the government you see there, were the same people that captured and sold the Negroes as slaves. The reason you don't hear this is because the slave master understands the game of lying. So, but if you were to read, you would discover what we're telling you is correct. Now, let us take on those that believe that the color of the skin is what determines who they call negro or who they call black so you see just from above the highlighted portion here it tells you about those around lake chad and it says the black barbers that means the barbers are not really black but there are black barbers but further down it says but it may be asked on what ground are these dark groups included in the light colored caucasic division where their very presence seems to involve a contradiction of terms in terms the reason is because they cannot be separated anthropologically from that connection apart from the color which in some cases appears to be the result of climate and in others is certainly due to an infusion of negro blood these black caucasians you see black caucasians in brackets if the expression can be tolerated are amongst the very finest representatives of the Caucasic type, according to Messias Flower and Ledeca, 
This type is distinguished generally by light skin, though in aberrant groups as dark as the Ethiopic, hair ranging from fair to black, soft, straight or wavy, and transverse section, intermediate between the flat Ethiopic and round Mongol, full beard, skull variable though mostly mesocephalic. All our interest here is that there is some people being looked at as black Caucasians and that's what the Fulani is. Huh? So you see on the right, you see where it says the Baba is the West Hamitic type. The Fulanis are the, of the Baba race, just like the Kanuris. All these people are found in Nigeria. So if you are looking at when Africa will unite against the terror being unleashed on it with weapons made by the slave masters, you are dreaming. They are not the same people. So and as far as the slave master understands the intellectual weakness and mental weakness of the Negroid group, this is what is going to be happening. Just let's move forward anyway. So you can pause this page and read about Danfodio, the Fulani Madi, and um, how they built and conquered the whole area where it called Hamito Semitic Domain and all that. So, but our interest here is where it says on the right of this page that they are also distinctly more intelligent, more civilized, and more capable of upward development than the full-blood Negro. So it's telling you that they are more intelligent than the Negro. But remember, in one of these series, remember where they said the Negro must be forced to walk, otherwise the countries where he has been introduced and made progress under his servitude we no longer be able to progress or something along those lines which we can show you briefly so on a side note they always brag about how strong they are but they are not really strong and you see from um flora Shaw, that is the wife of frederick luger the british colonial officer he tells us that the bow and arrow often the poisoned arrow of the pagan is in dexterous hands a more effective weapon than the clumsy and old-fashioned musket of the local Mohammedan and it was by force of numbers rather than by superior weapons or military skill that the Fulani armies overpowered the pagan populations and their raids. Now remember, the Negroes were considered pagans because of their religion. If, if you doubt what we are saying, all you need to do is just study the Old Testament from Leviticus chapters 1 to 10. That is where you see what the Negro religion was all about. But they considered it paganism and came with their own treachery and fraud. So all the Negroes practiced that as a way of life rather than a religion. So they did all that when you commit a sin, you make an atonement which will be like offering sacrifices, which is what they do. It's called atonement, which they came to now say that, oh, somebody died on the cross and has now replaced those sacrifices so you understand what we're talking about here so it shows us clearly that those pagans were stronger in their defense but for the superior weapons of the Fulanese which we all know that the Fulanese do not manufacture themselves it is given to them by the Europeans so there is nothing like making noise about it they are not strong they are only just being used by the Europeans so let us show you one thing we were talking about where he says they are more intelligent. Now remember, are they more intelligent because they manufacture anything that you know? Are they more intelligent because they are better in school or in class or in anything? No. The reason the slave master understands to praise them and place them high is because they are using them. That's just what they are doing. They love the display of power. But they do not realize its responsibility that's why they use them so you will see them praising him you see how the au which is also a foot soldier of the um what do you call it united nations and they are all in the plan the same thing together you see how they now crowned the nigerian president champion of fighting corruption now if you ask them okay if he's fighting corruption tell us what and what he did you will see that they have nothing to say so we're just telling you this for you to go and read between the lines to understand what is going on. Now they are telling us that the Negro is not as intelligent. Then if they are not as intelligent, why not leave them alone? Why are you, Why did you capture them? 
Not others, or they only captured the Negroes. Remember, they made it clear who they wanted for slaves because the Negroes were supposedly more intelligent than the others. But then they needed to use the less intelligent Negroid and Hamitic races to capture the Negro for them, which is what they are doing. Like they are fighting and killing Negroes today. They are laughing and pretending not to see what is going on. So many people side with them without knowing the extent of damage they are causing. So over time, you will see that they will succeed and they now say, oh no, these ones are more intelligent because they have been stupid technically. Remember, it's only a very big fool that you will give weapons to kill people for you and he goes to kill them for you and comes out to brag that he's strong and intelligent and you praise him with that. That should tell you the level of mindset these people have. But let us move forward to show you what we meant earlier. So now they claim that these people are more intelligent than the Negroes. But they are telling us that now as the Negro was originally imported as a laborer but now refuses to labor, it is evident that he is a lamentable failure. Either he must be compelled to work by some stringent law against vagrancy or these beautiful countries that prospered under the conditions of Negro forced industry must yield to ruin under Negro freedom and idle independence. For an example of the results, look to St. Domingo. Under peculiar guidance and subject to a certain restaurant, the Negro may be an important and most useful being, but if treated as an Englishman, he will affect the vices, but none of the virtues of civilization and his natural good qualities will be lost in his attempt to become a white man. And our question to you is, if the Negro was really not intelligent as they are saying, how come his first industry caused people to develop? The United States was built through slave labor. Europe, predominantly the British, France, Italy and all those places were built through Negro slave labor. The Middle East, the same thing. So any of these lies wouldn't make sense to anybody who is free from the yoke of mental slavery. All you need to do is to study the materials, read between the lines. You see that all they are doing is ganging up against the Negroes. So let us reference a sketch of the modern languages of Africa accompanied by a language map, volume 1, published 1883. We see the following. From the highlighted portion, Ethiopic subgroup, I turn to the third subgroup of the Hamitic group, the Ethiopic, and find new complications. In this region also, we have lava streams of Semitic origin pouring into the forts of the Hamitic strata and we feel the presence of the politically dominant America. So now on the right, you can pause the video and read it yourself. It shows us that then the term Ethiopic may be objected to, but Abyssinian would be too narrow and no other term sufficiently distinctive suggests itself. No doubt Homer uses the word whatever in a vague way, though the meaning of the word is sunburned in his famous lines which you can see if you can read that anyway we gather that they were the remotest of the then known world and that they appeared on the east and west coast of africa which description would apply equally well to the hamites as to the negroes the word appears again in the septuagint in the famous passage of jeremiah can the ethiopian change his skin but the assertion of the commentators that this was a negro is exceedingly doubtful. Later on, the eunuch of Kandake, queen of the Ethiopians, is mentioned, but there is little doubt that she was queen of Napata on the Middle Nile and the Hamite. So you see the difference. When they bring their story, they tweak it with authority. You see how they are changing the fact that the Ethiopian eunuch of the Bible is now Kandake queen of the Ethiopians, probably referring to the modern day Ethiopia which had nothing to do with the Ethiopian of the Bible. You see how they are orchestrating all kinds of fraud and lies simply because the Negroes refuse to study, refuse to read between the lines to see what may be going on. But let us um, move forward. So if we also reference British Nigeria by A.F. Mokola Ferryman published 1902, we see the following. 
This classification is at first sight clear enough, but an element of confusion appears when you find the Negroes described as sons of Ham and Mohammedans in general spoken of as Arabs. Practically, we have only to deal with Hamites, Negroes and a cross between the two. The first and last, Holy Mohammedan, the Negro and the men pagan, though where he has been conquered, Mohammedan, as to languages, the Hamites of this part of Africa have only two, Fula and Tibu, the Negroids too, Hausa and Kanuri, while the Negroes speak a diversity of distinct languages and innumerable dialects. Of the Fulas and Hausas, perhaps enough has been said in former chapters, but our interest is where he told us who the Negroes are. So you see why the rest of Africa are so happy keeping quiet and pretending not to see the killings going on where the Negroes are because obviously you see that the Negroes have a different languages, a different language from those of the Negroid and the Hamites. So you see what is going on. But because the Negroes do not bring out time to read, the so-called descendants of former slaves in the US see Africa as a room, one small room where they come from. They don't even know where they could have been from. They have no sense of fraternity and brotherhood, which is most unfortunate. So they keep on going to embrace those who were actually behind their sorrows. They don't even look to the side of those who are supposedly their brothers. Most of them do not even know about these killings. When they hear it, some of them see it as, oh no, Africans killing other Africans. They don't know that it is the non-Negroes actually killing the Negroes. Let us move forward. So now from the same book, read this portion very, very carefully. You see where it tells us that it is in these non-Hausa provinces that the fuller power has done most damage. Since the Emirs consider the pagan aborigines fair game for slave raiding, with the result that the country, once fertile and populous, has been devastated. In dealing with the more important of the fuller provinces, we will commence with those which lie furthest from the capital of the empire and gradually walk from the east to west. Adamawa, the easternmost kingdom over which the Fulas pretend to hold sway, is situated in the upper reaches of the Benue River and mainly on its southern or left bank. So you see it says the non-Hausa people and remember we read earlier that the Negroes are those that are speaking these other multiple different languages. So you see the Fulas do not read the Negroid. That's the Negroid group. The Hausas are Negroid but they read the Negroes. So and the only way based on their mental capacity they would have known who to capture would be the Europeans telling them who they want. So you see how their game is. So that is why till today when they are killing. Remember the game today is the same slave trade but slightly modified. What they do is to keep those Negro areas in perpetual turmoil so that the Negro will be forced out to seek for their visas, to escape through the desert, to come through the ocean. You hear when people are drowning in the oceans and all the Mediterranean or wherever to come and be slaves to them. That's what they are doing. It's very simple to decipher if you can walk to identify who and who were at least classified as Negroes during the slave trade. You see that it is the same game. They are still using the same Negroid and Hamitic groups because of their low mental capacity, unfortunately, against the Negroes. So you see why it was impossible and will remain impossible for the Africans to unite against any such terror because as far as the Hamitic and Negroid groups are there, the slave master will continue using them for his evil. So let us reference the Nigeria Handbook containing statistical and general information compiled by A.C. Bonds and it was published in 1919. We see the following. Liberia is an independent Negro Republic with an estimated area of about 10,000 or 40,000 square miles and an estimated population of 2 million. The capital is in Monrovia. So now you see that Liberia is a Negro Republic. But now when there was war, which they created, they sent the Fulani slave raiding army, which was the Nigerian army, to go and keep the peace there. So you see why the war lasted for so long. Remember, if you want to end that war, one of the simplest ways to do it is from source. Whoever is making the weapons is stopped. 
that's as simple as it can be but you see how they moved in with more weapons because the slave master understands that for each weapon for each bullet shot for each person killed he smiles to the bank so now you see why they say the, the negroids are not very smart the army belongs to the hamites and negroes and negroid not negroes so any negro there is just being a mental slave because he's forced by economic stagnation which they unleash on the negroes to be part of the army to be killing people so when they create war somewhere they send someone else to go and quell it you see the same thing they are doing with boko haram you see the same thing they are doing with fulani hartsmen the weapons are made by them and they all the programming the training provided by them but because these people lack basic common sense they lack the love of humanity they do not have the milk of human kindness flowing in their veins that is why they enjoy human and negro suffering remember these people you expect to come together as one with the negroes enjoy seeing the negroes being killed that is why you see there is no single african head calling for peace there is none that you see saying hey why are you killing these people why not stop because they've all been programmed they enjoy the killing even if they condemned it after watching this video you will discover that it's just lip service they are in it together but the unfortunate thing is that the negroes do not know if you look at the history you see when this conquest started and it's still going on and it continues to go on if you think they were happy to end the slave trade why did they kill lincoln when he freed the slaves and established the freedman savings bank why did they kill the bank if they loved it so much or they wanted the negroes to move forward so you need to understand what is going on so when you hear professor gates paid to come and tell you that africans so that africans you understand why they are paying why they are busy trying to sell that dummy to everybody including the negroes so here you remember we told you that there are pockets of negroes in yoruba land and you see where it tells us that of the grand total referred to above visibly 7.8 million whatever and 2910 were non-natives of west africa this number comprising 2354 europeans of whom 706 were an ocean cargo and passenger steamers on census day the 3rd of april 99 asiatics and 487 colored non-west africans chiefly negroes born in the brazils and west indies the majority of whom were residing in lagos town so you see that most of those freed negroes came back when lagos was part of gold coast which was ghana and our, our colony and all that so they have done a lot of things in that area but they know who is who they have granular details to the last person which you don't know so they need these uh, people who are mentally um kind of um, below level to be able to sustain their subjugation of the negro race remember if you remember the case of june 12 and abiola in nigeria you might be wondering oh why would they kill a yoruba man and install another yoruba man it is highly likely that abiola is a negro but obasanjo is not so this is what you see you may not know this unless you go and conduct an extensive research to understand who is who this is why you notice that census is not done the right way in nigeria no state governor is allowed to conduct a census remember if you have a family common sense indicates that you should be able to know how many people in your family to know how much food you need how much accommodation and all that but now you have so-called state governors but they are not allowed to conduct census because they don't understand and the economic first principles even though the negroes understand it some of them though the negroids do not and of course the hermetic groups because they are less intellectually endowed than the negroes so the slave master has to use them but let us um, round up by showing you what they are doing presently so let us reference the white man in nigeria by george douglas hazardin and it was published in 1904 we see the following the house soldier is about right the gun is greater than the horse or the maxim the fulani conquered the people with cavalry hordes of horsemen 
moving great distances in the night, jangling, shouting, screaming, spreading panic right and left, slashing, riding down and trampling on the unarmed and industrious Hausa. The maxim is the quick and painless death in the reckless charge through which the Mohammedan, intoxicated with his religion, breaks into paradise. Between the two comes the slaughter in cold blood of the seventh pounder. But our interest here is the Hausa, how they were conquered by the Fulanese. You see how the, Fula, uh, the, the they did it. And remember, the Fulani do not manufacture any weapons. They are just European and Arab foot soldiers. So you understand why the Hausas are very uh, happy to be slaves under the Fulani because they understand that the Fulani will unleash terror on them when they speak up. This is why sometimes you think they are enjoying their suffering. No, the reason is they understand that this Fulani will take care of them, will slaughter them in their numbers if they spoke up. So their duty is to sing praises. If you notice those from southern Nigeria too, the Negroes as well, who have been conquered mentally and then spiritually by the establishment, they start singing praises, even when there is nothing to praise them for. And that is the key thing you need to bear in mind. But let us show you what they do with the army. You might be wondering, oh, if the army was a full and slave raiding terror group and renamed a Nigerian army in 1863, how come there are Negroes in them? Let us show you how they deal with those Negroes. So please pause the video and read the highlighted portion yourself. But our interest here is where it tells us that it is in northern Nigeria that the soldier knows nothing about blank cartridge. There he lives in grass huts and is sometimes missing after a fire. There he is sent off to outpost duty as soon as he knows enough of his drill. There he travels light, wears rags, and is lucky if he can find a tree to rest or camp under. There he is sometimes hungry and often try tired but laughs like a schoolboy when suddenly ordered to go on palaver. There he gets shot in the stomach, poisoned by arrows and snakes, and shattered by shot from cannon the Frenchman has given to the slave raiding emir. So the emir must be Fulani. Then the Frenchman has given the weapons to the emir, who is the slave raider, and then the Hausa is sent to his death. So you see how their game is. It is the same game they are now doing on the Nigerian army with the Negroes and Negroid groups there too. So what they do is they tell you they have Boko Haram, they have Hats men. So they pitch them. They have already equipped them. Remember, they know where the weapons go through. They all know where the weapons come from. Remember, they, they, in Nigeria, you are not allowed to hold firearms. That's to keep you vulnerable. So what they do for the army is they now equip those they call Boko Haram who nobody knows but they know then when they equip them they pitch the nigerian army the negro and negroid groups and send them to their death this is just what they do you see how they deliberately wrote it here so our challenge to you is to go and study and see now the nigerian army will now bury those people secretly that's what they are doing because let's show you what the map looks like so from the map you see the areas written boko haram areas fulani terrorist harassment area and the peaceful areas the peaceful areas are where the negroes are from while the negroid group are predominantly from the north so what the terror group the nigerian army now does is they will post the negroes and the negroid groups to the boko haram and fulani terrorist harassment areas so that they can send them to their death and then post their own people, their own brothers, to the peaceful areas in the south where the Negroes live. So they make money, so they extort the people. That's all what they are doing. If you doubt us, if you don't believe us, all we challenge you to do is conduct your research. That's all. We, we, we appreciate if you challenge us or you doubt us. And then when those soldiers are killed, the Nigerian army will bury them secretly because this is a full and terror group that was renamed Nigerian Army in 1863, which we also challenge you to go and investigate. So tomorrow they are going to say, oh, the Negroes are not very intelligent. Whereas this is a game they are playing using the Negroid groups. And because the Negroes are being subjugated economically and otherwise, some of them join the army. That's the same thing they would have done if it was still a, a slave raiding terror group. 
So we challenge you to tell us where we have lied. These things are based on research. There is no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone. And here we come to the end of this edition of African Betrayal of Negroes. Remember, this is in response to questions like why Africans could not unite to stop the slave trade. So we wanted to show you that it is the Africans are actually united against the Negroes and they are always on the side of the slave masters, which you can see from the records and history and contemporary events. So we challenge you to find time to conduct your own research. See what you can find. Don't be biscuit or bread-headed and expect the slave master to be feeding you with truth. The slave master is a liar and he understands who the fools are and where they live in South Saharan Africa. We thank you very much for listening and please, please find time to conduct your own research. Peace.